I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, are you ready for us to call for that daily bread today? Are you ready? And say this with me. Say, Father, I demand today my daily bread, and I receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, praise God. Now, whenever we pray this prayer, make sure you release your faith with it. How do you release your faith? Understand that you are responding to a command that Jesus gave. What is the command? Jesus said, after this manner, pray. It's not an advice, it's a command, praise God. It's not just a teaching, it's a command. Every word that Jesus spoke was a command to us, praise God. So he said, after this man I pray. And then he says, in the midst of it, he says, say to the Father, give us this day our daily bread. So, so it's a command. So whenever we declare those words, understand that we are speaking in response to his command. And you remember what Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandment. Praise God. Let's just go into today's teaching. Father, we bless you today. Thank you for your anointing that is available in our lives. That anointing that takes away body and destroys you. Thank you for your word is coming strong in our spirits today. And there is an understanding flowing in us to bring forth the fruit that is your heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, yesterday we began to look at Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Jesus speaking there and he says not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven now now to make it stronger look at what Jesus said in the next verse it says many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in your name and not, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Now, he's not saying, Halagaya. Remember, Jesus said, This sign shall follow them that believe. And then he says, In my name they will cast out devils. And then Jesus now comes again and says, <laughs> Not many that say to me, Lord, Lord. First of all, the Bible says no man can say unto him, no man can call him Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is still saying, it's not everybody that says Lord. And he was not referring to fake people calling him Lord. He said, this is where we need to be careful. You know, you hear people start juxtapolating all funny stuff, saying that, oh, the moment you are saved, then you, there is nothing you can do about it again. You, 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 and then you, when you hear their uninformed analogies, someone say, how can you undo what God has done? Come on now. What funny reasoning. <laughs> ah. Be careful the kind of thoughts you allow to, to, to brood in your mind. Always subject your reasoning to the Spirit of God that brings the Word of God. You see, because you will begin to understand the character of God. And someone say, how can somebody undo what God has done? Is it not amazing? Did God create the devil? 
God created Lucifer. He was beautiful in his creation. So what do you think happened? God now woke up one day and said, Lucifer, you have been too fine. You know what? From now on, I'll command you to be a devil. Think that's what God did? No. Lucifer turned from his ways. He turned from his ways. So how was he able to turn from his ways that was perfect that God made him? Adam and Eve, they were made perfect when they were created. I mean, they were set on their journey. How did they sin against God? And they were driven from the garden. God created the garden for them. But he drove them out of the garden. He said yeah, that's in the Old Testament. But what Christ have done, how foolish can that reasoning be? He said when people talk like that, you just know that they don't have any understanding of the personality of God. All they have is words. They play with words. That's what people do. And be careful with people like that. Be careful with friends like that. Don't hang around people like that who, who don't have a, a real fellowship with the Spirit of God. They have all their fellowship stops with the Bible. We can take the Bible and begin to argue things out. But that's not our calling. Our calling is to receive the word of God from him and it will make us understand the Bible. See, if you don't have the word of God, you will never understand the Bible. Is that they're not the same thing? No, they are not. See, that's where people make the mistake. That's where people go into error. Thinking the Bible is the word of God. It is not the word of God. It has never been the word of God. Praise God. The word of God is different. The word of God is God's communication with you. So if you don't receive the word of God, you will never understand the Bible. Never. And also... If you don't, you, you must receive the word of God concerning every topic that you want to think or talk about in scriptures. You must receive the word of God concerning it. That is only when you can now look in the scriptures and then understanding will be given to you. You see, you know, I'll give you an example. The Bible says money answereth all things. It's written in the scriptures. Is written in the book of the book of Proverbs or Ecclesiastes, I think. Yeah, it's written there. It says, "Money answereth all things." Now there was a season, you know, that was a, a main scripture. You know, preachers were trying to inspire believers to to believe in prosperity and to grow rich and then to have money, and then they use scriptures like that. Said, "Money answereth." All things. And another one says, money is a defense. Now, it's written in the scriptures that money answers all things. But it is not the word of God that money answers all things. It's not the word of God. It can never be the word of God, praise God. So, so, so if it's not the word of God, then why is it written in the Bible? He didn't say it. God never said money answers all things. Because number one, it doesn't even suit the character of the scriptures. Now, I remember I heard all those sermons. I heard all those messages. I was inspired in that direction also until the word of the Lord came to me. And I just, I was just fellowshiping with the Lord one day. And, 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 and the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, I never said money answers all things. I never said that. I couldn't have said that. And then I thought of it like, yeah. You see, when the, when, when the word of God comes to you, it gives you quick understanding because the word of God comes by the spirit of God. So the spirit of God who conveys the word of God to you gives you quick understanding. So he just says something to you. And, you know, that was why Peter, James, and John, they were on that mountain with Jesus. And then Elijah appeared, Moses appeared, and they didn't need anyone to introduce them to him. Because, you see, from what they were discussing, because the word of God was in that environment, the moment they looked, a quick understanding was given to them. They knew exactly what was going on there. See, this is why the Holy Spirit is in our lives. So, and then the Lord said to me that, I never said money answers all things. The moment he said that to me, everything concerning the truth about money and what God could have said and could, just came alive in me. 
And then I said, oh, yeah. How, how could I have ever believed that God said this? And then I began to do a study again on that. And then I found out that that's not even what the Bible meant when he wrote that money as I know. He was rebuking the princes of that time and saying that, look, these guys, instead of them to do the work that they are supposed to do, they sit down and they drink and do stuff and they depend on the state's funds or they depend on their money to answer in order to pay for all those lifestyle that they were living. So it wasn't an instructive word saying money answer is all things. It's actually a rebuke that people think money will answer for everything. See? But because, you know, when, when someone has something in his mind and he wants to push it out, he begins to look for any scripture to lean it on. But that's not what we do. We depend on the Lord Jesus Christ who through the Holy Spirit will give us his word and then forms our thinking. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, I said, Jesus actually said, it's not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, and that's a very strong statement. Because, number one, nobody can call him Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is inferring that it's not everyone who have even come into the kingdom that will stay or go into the kingdom of heaven. So you better watch it. That's what Jesus was saying. And then next thing he says, he says, many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, did we, have we not prophesied in your name? And he didn't say, shut up, he didn't prophesy. No. He said, have we not prophesied in your, have we not prophesied in your name? He says, have we not in your name cast out devils? Jesus said, his signs shall follow them that believe. So you saw them casting out devils. Yet Jesus said, that alone will not guarantee you entering the kingdom of heaven. Wonderful. Wonderful. What will guarantee you entering the kingdom of heaven? It says, only those that do the will of my Father which is in heaven. What is the will of God which is in who is in heaven? Is that you bear fruit. Is that you bear fruit. Listen, we'll go to heaven simply because we look like him. Not just by faith. No, we look like him in reality. Until we get to that point where men say, wow, you just look like Jesus. Praise God. Yeah. Now, he says, and then I will profess unto them. That's in verse 23, John chapter, Matthew chapter 7. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that walk iniquity. You see, now he calls them walkers of iniquity. Now, if they were walkers of iniquity, how come they call him Lord? How come they cast out, they, they were able to cast out devils? How come they were able to do many mighty works? Not just do many mighty works in his name. Now, these are these are mysteries in scriptures, but you see, they are not such a mystery to those who have submitted their minds for the Holy Spirit to teach. It's not such a mystery. You remember one time the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Master, we found someone casting out devils in your name and we forbade him because he was not one of us. Now, the disciples of Jesus were walking with Jesus, so they knew everything about Jesus. And then suddenly, there was this man they met. And then he was just kind of, they looked at him like, who are you? Have you been to a Jesus meeting before? Well, yeah. Have, have Jesus laid hands on you before? No. So how come you're doing this thing? Please stop it. Stop it. If the man was not getting results, they wouldn't have needed, they, there was no need to, there wouldn't have been a need to talk to him. But the man was getting results. So they said, no, 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 we've got to stop this guy because he will lead people astray because he is not one of them. What was the response to Jesus? He says, leave him alone. He says, leave him. Jesus didn't commend them for stopping him. He said, leave him alone. Let him do what he's doing. And then he told them that because there is no one who does a miracle in my name that will speak evil of me. 
So leave him alone. You know, today we want to tell, okay, this person, yeah, he belongs to, sometimes you go somewhere and say, what denomination do you belong to? As though you must belong to a denomination before you're recognized as a believer. No, sir. People meet Jesus. People meet Jesus. They don't have to come through your denomination. Paul, there was no denomination that preached to Jesus. Paul met Jesus on the way of Damascus and he grew up to become one of the greatest preachers of the gospel, one who understood the Lord so much. It wasn't by denomination. Our time is up. Praise God. Listen, I'll see you tomorrow and I pray that the Spirit of God is causing His fruits to be born in you. Thank you so much for joining me in this broadcast. God bless you. Bye-bye.